So I posted this about two hours ago on my community tab. And this is from Twitter. Somebody, um, I believe this is not NFL analyst, but like an NFL Twitter page. Posted top 10 NFL offensive lines for 2024. And they listed us at number 8. Right behind the Chargers, right above the Rams and the Jets, right? And I kind of just wanted to see what you guys were thinking. And looking at the comments... Some people are like, ooh, I don't know if we would be that high. Some people are agreeing with it, right? So I wanted to see where Pro Football Network had us. Because Pro Football Focus, actually, no, I believe, yeah, this is Pro Football Network. Pro Football Network has posted a lot of different, you know, things recently. They posted the receiver rankings. Chase is number five. They posted uh, notable players who never won Super Bowl, Anthony Munoz. Um, and they posted the season opener. They also posted the best backup quarterbacks where Jake Browning was actually number four, uh, five on that list of best backup quarterbacks in the NFL. Mike Brown and Duke Tobin was the uh, seventh best GM in the NFL. So I was like, okay, where does Pro Football Network feel? And where they feel, apparently, is they have us going at the 13th overall spot when it comes to offensive line. So they think there's 12 better offensive lines ahead of us. And again, listen, we can't really talk about how good our line's going to be until we see them actually go out there and play, right? But we can speculate on paper. I don't think we're 13th, okay? Here's how I look at the whole rundown of our offensive line. Our left tackle and right tackle, barring any injuries, not going wood, okay? I think our offensive line is pretty damn good at the tackles position. I'm not worried about Trent Brown as long as he stays healthy. I'm not worried about Landon Brown as long as he stays healthy. The center, Teddy K, I'm perfectly okay with. And I'm okay with Kappa, okay? And you might say, well, the elephant in the room then becomes Cordell Volson. Now, I have been very negative on the channel of Cordell Volson, right? Haven't been too much of a fan of him because I don't, I'm not a fan of people who can't protect my quarterback and could risk my quarterback getting injured. But even myself, with how emotional I get during these football videos and during football stuff, I can at least be a little bit more logical to say that his second half of the season last year, Quinta Volson definitely played a lot better than his first half. I mean, you can just see by the grades. Pass blocking grades was at zero. Now, in fairness to Cordell Volson, week three, he went against Aaron Donald. Exclusively, pretty much every single play. We tried double teaming Donald, but there were some times we didn't. And Cordell Volson was the, you know, guy who dealt with that. Also, we had an immobile quarterback in Joe Burrow. Would Volson have put up these numbers if Jake Browning was a quarterback for a couple of weeks and Jake Browning can move around? Who knows, right? At the end of the day, we can only go off what ifs, right? What if, what if, what if, what if. At the end of the day, what we do know is one single fact, and that is Cordell Volson played really good at the end of the season. He's gotten better. And, you know, even though I'm very negative toward the guy, it is only his second season. I mean, this is going to be his third season coming up, so maybe, and again, I said it's my last video, I need to self-improve myself, right? Maybe I'm a little bit too harsh on the guy. I don't think the guy is that good, but clearly Cincinnati, Frank Pollock, the Bengals coaching staff thinks he's that good, and they're very confident he can be that good. So, we'll see, right? We'll see with that situation. But that's the only problem I truly think of on our offensive line that's a problem. Is our left guard position. I think we have our right tackle figured out. If it's not going to be Trent Brown, it's going to be a Marius Mims. If Trent Brown goes down with injury. I have very com a lot of confidence in both of those guys to play well. I think Orlando Brown will play better in his second year with us. Obviously, first year was a little rough. But he also had a bad offensive line. The right side was getting destroyed. The left guard was getting destroyed. The center and right guard. I mean, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a unit, right? The offensive line is a unit. And if one side isn't working out, the other sides aren't going to work out as well. So that's kind of how I look at it, right? I think this year would be a lot better 
overall wise. But that left guard position, I think we need. Here's what I'll say about offensive line, right? It's going to be a top 10 unit if we have options at left guard. I don't think we can go into this year with just Cordell Volson. I think Cordell Volson needs competition. I think we need to have depth at the offensive lines. I mean, we've been talking about it for years now. We need to have good, capable starters. And if Cordell is, you know, does progress and gets better, and let's say he starts off next season with these numbers, not these numbers, but these numbers, cool. I'm okay with that, right? I don't mind. I want him to be successful. I want to have a guy like Cordell Volson here be successful and know my quarterback's protected. And even though I've said many times, we could use the mic cart instead of Cordell Volson. And put barbed wire on the mic cart. Hey, listen, I'm just I'm just putting ideas out there, okay? FBI, stop coming to my house and saying, you, you saw online, you said about the mic cart. Listen, ideas. If the Chiefs are going to cheat, we're going to cheat too, okay? That's just how this works. Anyway, the point is, Matt Lee, we dropped him in the seventh round to be kind of a rotational guy to see what he can do, right? He's going to compete with Cordell Volson. Picked up some other offense linemen to compete with Cordell Volson. That's going to be awesome. But I really do, especially after June 1st. The June 1st cuts, second wave free agency. We need to pick up another guard. I know Andrus Pete was a guy we talked about before. And again, I like the idea of waiting to see who's available, right? See who does get cut. Because there's probably going to be some good offense linemen who are veterans who get cut. Every year it happens. So, how I'll say with the offensive line is, right now, this offensive line is not complete. It is 90% complete. You can always improve and get better. So, I think we need to take a step back here. And I will say our offensive line, I think it's going to be top 10. But we're not there yet. I think right now, or, I mean, sorry, I think what line right now is top 10. But I'm saying I think we can easily get higher than that. Like top five. But we have to continue to work. So we'll see how this ends up working out. Again, like I said, at the end of the day, Cordell Volson is the biggest X factor here. If he takes a step forward, we're good. I don't feel too confident going into the season as him being my starting left guard. But I think that what we need to do with Cordell Volson is keep him in a tight leash. Tight leash and also see... What could happen in, you know, preseason and also training camp. And if someone looks better than him, well, we might have a new left guard going into next year. I think the center, right guard, right tackle, and left tackle, I think that is solidified. See you guys next one. Peace.